Psalms chapter 51. 51. Any of y'all need hearing aids? I preached a message many, many years ago on spiritual amnesia. And uh, amnesia comes from, can be medical, it can be a shock, can be something you hit your head up against, uh, but you lose track of everything but the present. Everything behind you is, you know, you don't know where it went to, don't know what's going on. But what I see in this day and age, and I might be preaching to myself, but the um, thing that I see more often than not is what this thing that we've gone through has caused us. I'm not talking about your spiritual walk or all that. I'm talking about this this thing called pandemic, and you hear all the, the hoopla about it and the pros, the cons, uh, all that kind of stuff, which I'm not here to judge that. What I'm here to observe, and I have to look at myself at times, what causes you to have the joy that you have or have had? Could I put it in the past? Can I put it in the present? I think a great example of this, you find it in Psalms chapter 51, and a great example of this is by the name of David. Now, we might disagree on some things, but you you would agree that David was chosen by God, would you not? Uh, They might even say David was a mighty man of valor. Um, David had all the credentials. He had the backing of the Lord. He had the people where, you know, Saul killed this and David did, you know, he had a good testimony. But something went awry in his life. And you know what? If we'll read Psalms chapter 51 a little bit, let's pick it up here, if you don't mind, um, in verse 1. Psalms 51, 1. What does it take to sap you of your joy? What is your joy? If you have a bunch of money, does that make you happy? It might make your debtors happy. (laughs) You ever notice something about money? As soon as it comes, it's gone before you can get to it. Um, It flees away from you. But what is going on here with David? Uh, Look at what he says in verse 1. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Why is he asking for this? Why is he asking for it? Um. Wash me thoroughly with mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. For I have knowledge my transgressions and my sins ever before me. Against thee, who are you doing it against? Well, I'm upset with Brother Bob. Well, against thee and thee only. <laughs> For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sins ever before me against thee and thee only. Have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest? Behold, I am shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desire truth in my inward parts, and in the hidden part thou hast, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear the joy and gladness that thou, that the, excuse me, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide my face from my sins. Blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. 
and take not the Holy Spirit from me. Aren't you glad in the New Testament it says you're sealed unto the day of redemption? Amen? Cast me not away from the presence and take not the Holy Spirit from me. Now here's David. Restore unto me the joy. Amen? Brother Jim, pray for us, please. Thank you. Now, here's some of the things that you get from David. Uh, between verse 7 and verse 15, there's 12 different peti petitions, if you will. That's hard to say when you have your tongue in your mouth <laughs> crossways. But the psalm this, does this, and we realize this is David, and we understand you look at David and say, David ought to be like this because look what David did. Well, you know, it's easy to read about what David did, and it's very hard for us to look at what we've done. And uh, David looks and he pleads with the Lord to restore something to him. And you know what sin will do? Sin will steal your joy. Amen. I don't care who you think you are. I don't, from the upper down to the lower, it's going to take your joy away. Uh, why? Because there's something inside of you. The uh, Bible says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you're sealed unto the day of redemption. There's something called the Holy Spirit in you that will not allow you to be comfortable with the things that you're not supposed to be doing, the sin that you are trying to hide. And here's David. <laughs> and David uh, has cried out for mercy. And he does it openly, and everybody can read it. And um, I, I look at it, and I, I, I honestly was going to preach on the altar this morning, and I just, the Lord took me away from it, and I don't know why. That's his business, not mine. But... He looks at this thing, and David looks back over his life and says, you know what? Uh, sin has cost me a lot. And I'm going to tell you something, brethren. I don't care how close you are to God. Sin will cost you something when you start messing with it. When you start allowing things to dictate to you not to do the things you ought to be doing, then that thing has got control of you. It's, gotten, it's really got a grip on you. And you look at David, and David... David was a man after God's own heart, right? David was chosen by God. David's a man brought down Goliath. But what, Brother Wade, not really David, wasn't it God that brought down Goliath? It's God that will bring your Goliath down in. God used David as a vessel. And you know what God saved you for? To use you as a vessel. But you can't be used as a vessel if you're not worried, <laughs> longing to have that vessel be used by God. I preached a message years ago on the potter and the clay. And you know what? We have a God that's willing to take up that old piece of clay and mold it and make it into something that can be useful for him. And uh, it's important, it's imperative that we start to realize that, listen, I, the Bible says, yeah, and all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You're going to go through something in life. But when you go through it, how do you react to it? How do you deal with it? What's the thing? And uh, when we lose this joy, the Lord wants us to know. You know what David's biggest cry was? I don't have what he used to have. I mean, seriously. You say, well, uh, the preacher, you know, I just don't like coming and hear the preacher. Well, okay, where are you going? Why are you going? You should go get something. You should be listening to something from the Lord. And listen, David, <laughs> David honestly took a good look at himself. You know what, if we would take a good look at ourselves, quit looking at everybody else, quit looking at circumstances, situations, quit looking at all that stuff, look at you. Look at yourself. What has, if you don't have the joy, as David said, we can see, we can expose David, right? We can open up the can of worms and look at David, but are you willing to open up your own worms? Are you willing to open up that can yourself and look within yourself and say, what is this I'm going through and why am I going through it? And we can read about David, can't we? That's open, that's exposed. But what if God took and opened your book up? Why are you there? What's going on with you? Why are you in the situation you are? Um, some, and I'm not trying to be mean to the people that are sitting at home and enjoying the 
uh, whatever, if you want to call it preaching or teaching, but, you know, they get it sent into their home and that. I, I think I, I've, I, I want to get away from it, and there's a reason I want to get away from it, because it, people, it's easier for you to get up and put your coffee on, sit down a couple donuts, kick your feet back, and say, well, I don't like what he said, click. <laughs> you can turn that off, turn it on. Uh, but I have some family that hopefully this is reaching at times that can't or won't go to church. But here we are with David, and David was a man after God's own heart. David uh, uh, was the man where Saul got jealous, where David, he killed thousands, David killed ten thousands. David was a mighty man of war. David was all these things. But you know what David ended up doing? You find it right here, the accounts of his life in Psalms 51, he is crying out saying, I want my joy back. I want that which caused me to be excited and thrilled about God. I need it back more than I need anything. I don't need food. I don't need people to bow down. i got to have my joy back because if I don't have my joy, it will not reach to other people. Too many Christians go walking around, I'm saved. Bless God, I'm saved. But, uh, I've been through it. I've been rough, it's been rough, it's been tough, it's been this. I understand, I'm not making fun of your problems in your life, but what I am saying, you're looking at now. You need to look in the future. Look at now will cause trouble. Looking at now, the doctors can call and say this or that, and it could change your, <laughs> your smile into a frown real quick. But you know what the deal of it is that David had realized David had a past. And David realized something. He had slipped away from God. Now, let me give you something here, first of all. Number first, the realization. When this is gone, you need to realize this as David did and said that he lost it. And then he asked, Lord, to restore it. I think the first thing you have to do is realize I don't have, the, as Buddy used to say, the giddy-up as I used to have. What excites you now? Are you more excited about some event coming on? Some, uh, are you more excited about vacation than you are about God? Are you more excited about the physical things than the spiritual things, the material things than the spiritual things? What excites you? What has caused you to lose that excitement over God? David was a man just like you and I. He was handpicked by God. You know that. I know that. David was used mightily by God. But this mighty man cries out, Jim. He looks down and he says, I've lost it. And you know you can't lose your salvation. Amen? But you can lose your joy. You see, salvation is something the Lord did. But your joy is something you can control. Amen? Realization, when it's gone, you need to realize it. There are four things that David said that was wrong with his life. You know what David did? He didn't stick his finger in his mouth or his thumb in his mouth and said, things are rough. But David remembered some good times, too. You know what? I've remembered some great times. But we have to realize something. Truth, Psalms 51, 6. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and then hidden part, thou hast made me to know wisdom. Our fellowship with the Lord is based on one thing, truth. Be honest with yourself. Amen? Be honest, literally, with yourself. Why am I in the condition I'm in? Now, I could look at Wade and say, look, man, I'm in my condition because of, I love having him here to preach to I just like to look at him and look what, <laughs> but yeah, it, it, listen, it's easy for you to look at someone else and say, I can tell why they're in the trouble. They, well, let me say, the first time you do that, you better realize you're already in trouble. You're sitting around doing a bunch of judging. What are you judging about? You're imperfect just like that individual is, and when you start doing that, what you're doing is you're creating yourself a problem. 
what you ought to do is be praying. The Bible tells us pray one for another. Amen? The Bible says we ought to exhort one another uh, in love. I love you, brother. I just don't like you much. No, you've got to <laughs> encourage them. Listen, David had gotten to a point in his life, and I'm having a hard time getting this thing in my belt, so I'm moving it. When David gives, he starts realizing our fellowship with the Lord is based on one thing. But he used to call it, and don't take this the wrong way, get naked with God. In the sense that get all your pretenses away from you. Well, I'm this way. If it hadn't been for you, brother, I'd have been a lot better Christian. No. Your attitude ought not be looking at someone else in the cause that somebody else did something to you. David was a mighty man, amen, handpicked and hand chose by God to do what he did, but David lost it, and I would submit to you if David loses it, you and I can lose it. You say, well, David was in the Old Testament. David had the promises of God, brethren. You have some promises of God, don't you? Amen. So what caused you to lose it? Well, maybe it could be your lifestyle. Maybe you've taken your eyes off of God and put it on everything else. Sin causes us to hide the truth. Sin causes us to cover things up. This is what Achan did. This is what David did when Nathan came to him. You know what Nathan made him look at? Thou art the man. You're here to judge. It's easy. Ben, you could sit there and judge me. It's easy. I could have made a point better in that point. I could have preached this point better. It's about who's better or what. You get your turn, stand up here and shout at me. I'll stand my turn, take my turn, shout at you. But listen, let me tell you something. When you start to put something like this, it's, you have to look at yourself. You know what I see when I look at myself? Not much. Brethren, there's something lacking. I'm not saying just here. I, I look around, and I talk to a lot of Christians. I talk to a lot of the brethren, believe it or not, and some manufactured joy. That manufactured joy is something you try to muster up. There's only one real joy, and that's the joy he can give you. And you can lose that joy by things that you and mishandled in your life. Um, we're very judgmental, and uh, I try not to. I don't know what's going on in Brother Hunter's life, Chuck's life, uh, Ben's life, I, Jim's life. I don't know. I know some, but I don't know it all. But you know what your admonishment is? Pray one for another. Pray. Well, I saw some things I really don't like. Have you prayed for them? <laughs> Say, well, you're getting off and starting to, No. That's your job as a Christian, that we pray one for another. Well, I saw some things I didn't like. Did you get down and ask the Lord to help them with it? Pray. The truth was lacking. Behold, I desire truth, verse 6, and the inward parts and the hidden part. Thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Our fellowship with the Lord is based on the truth. Sin causes us to hide from the truth. We cover things up. He did it with Achan, and he tried with Achan, but he, he got found out. You can't mess with Bathsheba and not be found out. You can't be the way David's been. You say he was a mighty man of value, but he was a sinner just like you and I were. My relationship, I'm saved. That doesn't stop your old nature from trying to take control. Your old nature battles you all the time, challenges you about the God that you serve. Truth was lacking. Sin will cause you to hide it. We cover things up. That's what he taught, did with Achan. Uh, you know, David in his spiritual context, you know what David was? You remember the statement when Achan was talking? David, judgment. Did David judge it right away, brother? Did he not judge it? Was he sort of pharisaical? I know what I would do. David, thou art the man. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait. It makes it a whole different ball game when it comes to you. You understand? You know what I've gotten away from? Chuck went back here to pray, and I said, thank you, Lord, for reminding I went back and prayed just for a few minutes. I don't think I'm any better than anybody here, probably not even close to most of you. 
as far as doing the right thing. I make mess messes all the time, but I'm not going to sit there and try to just judge you. I need to look at me. The Bible says that the Bible tells us that we ought to have love for one another. The Bible says we ought to pray for one another, and that's important. You see, if a man, if a man be overtaken in a, what is your job? To restore such a one in the spirit of, excuse me? Oh, you mean you're not supposed to go and jump in his face? <laughs> such were some of you. But now! <laughs> Let me tell you something. God's done something for me, and I appreciate it. Lord, it made me to get something taken care of. And I can truthfully say, I... I I don't, know, I don't know of anybody. I don't, or you detest them, you hate them. No, no. If I could help them, I'd love to. And if being around me brings them down, I don't want to do that. Honestly, before God. We cover things up. We try to justify. Here's David, and Nathan gets him, and David, thou art a man, David goes, oh, <laughs> Oh, good night, it's, I'm caught. You know what you got to look at? Look at yourself. Is thy heart right with God? Is you got your, 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 everything in order? If it's in order, where's your joy? Do you know what David's suggesting? First of all, you can lose it. David Peacock, years ago, I forget the guy's name, he preached on a guy in his church. And uh, he got saved. The guy stunk. He was dirty. He lived, uh, I forget the guy's name. You guys probably heard him. But he um, got saved at David's church. And uh, I think it was every Saturday night he would take, he was not very bright. And he'd go around collecting newspapers, and he'd turn those newspapers in, and uh, he'd get money for them, and he'd go right to the church, and he'd not go. And I'm not getting you to tithe. I'm not worried about that. But he'd go in there, and he'd say, I want to see the preacher. And he's talking to the, the secretary there, and he said, well, the preacher's busy, and the preacher heard him and said, let, let him come on back. Let him come on. And he said, preacher, I, 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 I want to pay my tithe. You know what? That old boy had one thing. He had one thing that he knew. It wasn't about your offering. wasn't about... David said he had to go to him and repent of how he mocked that old boy. He said he stunk. He was a... <laughs> I don't want to use unkind words, but he was not very pleasant to be around. He was loud. He would interrupt at times. But David said he had one thing. He had his joy. And he said it was a time when this old boy was in the hospital and he was not expected to live. And um, his favorite saying, uh, when he talked to the preacher, he said, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. And he's in the hospital and David's dad wants to see him, and uh, the old boy just was the well, same way he always was, just upbeat, upbeat, had a smile on his face, and the preacher prayed with him, and he knew he was dying. And the preacher turned around, he said, hey, preacher! The preacher turned around and he said, thumbs up, preacher. I'm not going to let this situation Steal my joy. Don't let it steal your joy. People are looking at you and watching you. How are you handling situations? God's watching you how you handle. And look, don't let it steal your joy. If it can do it to David, it can do it to this preacher. It can do it to anybody. But David cries out the situation he was in. The problem that was very hypocritical when we aren't walking and living and speaking the truth. 
You know what David did? He recognized where he was, the joy that was lacking. Sin will, the old expression, take you farther than you ever thought, but it never leaves you the way it found you. It really doesn't. Sin will mar you. Sin will challenge you. But can I tell you what sin will do? It'll make you look hypocritical in front of the lost people. I thought you were saved. I thought you loved God. I thought the Bible encourages and exhorts us to love one another. Why are you walking around? Man, I tell you what, my problems are nobody knows the trouble I've been through. Can I tell you something most people don't know and they have their set of troubles? And <laughs> they really don't have a lot of time for it. Why? Because we're consumed a lot of times with our own troubles. And I'm not saying you shouldn't be. But there's always somebody who has a lot worse than you. There's always somebody going through a lot more than what you're going through. Have you ever stopped to do this? Probably sounds stupid. But have you ever got up and say, Lord, thank you? Thank you. You know what? I look at it. God gives me to October. I'll be 78 years of age. 78. You know what I say to the Lord? Thank you for the day in 19, September 21st, 1975. You saved me. But here, here's what I can say, Jim. When I ran from God for five years in destruction and destroying, I did. And how Buddy got a hold of me one day, he said, boy, you need to get it right or you're going to not bust hell wide open, but you're going to stand before a holy and a righteous God. I'm glad I had a friend that cared enough to tell me. But I'm more happy that I had a Savior that didn't give up on me. When I came back to the Lord that day, I realized one thing. I was existing, now I had life. I had the life he was talking about. Fellowship. The Bible says we have fellowship one among another. In the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son cleanses us from all sin. You know what we need is fellowship with each other. I need, if Wade's hurting, I need to pray for him. I need to pray. Seriously, I mean that. I need to pray God will help him through whatever situation he's going through. And I need to encourage him what God has brought me through. He'll bring you through too. Joy, it'll sap you of your joy. You go around worrying about everything. There's nothing you can do. Situations, I, I know people right now aren't here this morning because of situations they're going through. I'm not here to judge that. I'm just trying to tell you, God wants you to walk around realizing he has it under control. Joy and gladness disappear in David's life and ask for the Lord to restore it. The reason for it, the reason's always sin against God. David acknowledges it. Verse 3, he says, What? For acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. I don't care. I don't care who you think you are. The devil's going to stay. Put that load on you. Remember that sin right there? There it is right there. That's what's bogging you down. So how do I get rid of it? We'll find out at the end, but David gets it right. That's all I can tell you. I don't, that's all I know. As you know what? I'm still glad at my age God allows me to say, I'm not much on your preaching. I'm not much on it either, but I'm sorry. I'm going to stand here and do what God told me to do and whatever. The reason any of you get into your, your situation is because what Eve did. She wanted what God didn't want her to have. And she listened to the devil before she would listen to God. She misquoted the word of God. She backed me and said, well, see, there's the women. No. <laughs> Sir, remember, all of sin didn't come short. <clears throat> you understand that? Adam didn't have to follow her. He didn't have to follow her at all, did he? And the woman thou givest me. You know, I keep going back to that thing where, in Genesis, I think Genesis chapter 3, verse 9, where the Lord says, Adam! I would love to have been there to hear how he spoke, but he said, Adam, Adam, where art thou? 
You know God asked that question so the Lord could find him? No. No. He knows that. He's an, an, an all-knowing God, is he not? You know why he called Adam? Because what Adam's decision made to follow her and to keep her rather than follow God. Look what it's done for you, Adam. Say, who's right, who's wrong? They're both wrong. You can't do anything about what you did, but you can do, it, do something about today, to now, this morning. You can look at that thing and say, okay, Lord, but you know what? Amasha got, you, you keep looking at that thing. The Bible says we confess our sin. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin. Say, well, you know what your frown does? A lot of times it'll take the joy away from others. We're to encourage one another. Amen. That's what we ought to do. You say, well, the circumstances. Well, he had the joy, that, that he had the reason for the loss of his joy was the first thing that he saw. But secondly, in verse 3, he acknowledged it. He had committed adultery with Bathsheba. He tried to cover it up by planning that. He took her husband out, Uriah the Hittite. And you know what the fruit of sin? 1 John 3, 7, my little children, let not you deceive you. He that doeth righteous is righteous, even the righteousness, he is righteous. Hebrews 3, 8 says, harden not your hearts, as in provocation in the day of temptation in, in the wilderness. Sin will hide you from God. Sin wants to control you. Now, it doesn't have to be any great, well, you know, I went out and slaughtered. No. But every Christian ought to be a testimony. The Bible says, let your light so shine that, I think it said others. What are they looking for? Would you suggest through this period of time in David's life, David was walking around, I got the joy, 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 joy down in my... You think he was? You can't do it with that stuff piled on top of you. What's stopping your joy? What's stopping your light? You know, Serena bought these um, light bulbs. And you put those bad boys in there. As long as you plug them up, it'll put a, you turn it on and it puts a light. But it has one of those things where a storm comes by. And that storm knocks, of course, we lose power if we smell wrong. We got home, the, uh, I think it was last Wednesday, Wednesday before, I can't remember. We got home, and all of a sudden, we get in the house. And the moment we walk in the door, thank God we got the garage door up. We walked in the door, the power went off. Called Jim, he says, oh, we're on a different line. Remember that? He said, uh, I'm up here, you're down there. I'm going, well, you're near here. <laughs> nah, 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 no, no. <laughs> but all the lights went off. But these dumb light bulbs she bought, they charge themselves from when they're on. And you go around and you can hang them up and they bring light. I'm just trying to tell you, the storms that came out did not affect what those light bulbs were supposed to do. It allowed them to do it. What a blessing that is. The storms you go through in life are designed for a few things. Some, some design take you down, some all that. But David had options here. And David realized that sin's a robber of your joy. You can put it on, you can lay it down, you can say it any way you want. The fruit of sin, it will destroy your fellowship with the Lord, according to 1 John 3. So, Whosoever abideth in, in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither hath known him. 1 John 3, 7, little children let not be seen. He that doeth righteous, righteous, even as the righteous. It'll harden you. Hebrews 3, 8, harden not your hearts in, in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Sin hides God's face from you. Psalms 
Isaiah 59, 1. Behold, the Lord, his hand is not shortened, and that it cannot save, neither is his ear heavy that he cannot hear. Verse 52 says, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. Then sin chills the heart to, toward the spiritual things of God. Matthew 24, 12 says, Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. That's what it will do to you in your life. And you know what you're supposed to be? You're supposed to be a light representative of Jesus Christ. The light, amen, should you carry that light with you? I, I, I find these things amazing. She's got all these dumb things. And I'm like, you know what, of all the dumb things you bought, this one's probably pretty good. I mean, you laugh. Go look at my garage. <laughs> I couldn't get a bicycle in it. But in fairness, before I get in trouble, in fairness, most of it is things that she tries to do for weddings or for people and for the church. All that stuff is decorations that's got to go somewhere. I get myself out of the hole. We understand that you can lose your joy. It does not want us but we to lose it or go astray. Joy, David found out, could be restored. He can only do when you have to confess those sins. In other words, it's like the old expression I did many years ago. Anybody ever worked around rod work? Chuck Donnie's worked around a little bit. Uh, when you come home, it doesn't leave all the stink on the job. You carry the stink with you. You perspire in the shale. I tell you, the worst job of all is pre-stressed cables. That stuff has, is designed, it's got grease inside with the cable, and it's encased in a plastic. And uh, that stuff, Chuck can tell you, that stuff is dirty, and it's hard to get off, you and your clothes. And so uh, truth is that when you lose your joy, your salvation many times does not want us to, but we will stray and lose our joy. This joy can be restored. I remember getting home in the hottest of the, the summer times, perspiration. I could literally, I promise you, Nathan, I could literally put my jeans over there and they'd almost stand up by themselves. That much perspiration. You've probably been out there, you guys. And you, you get in there and there's nothing, there's nothing that gave me any great, seeing my wife, hello, I love you, I'm going to the shower. Uh, what's for dinner? No, what's, where's that shower at? You know what, as a Christian, you ought to be? Lord, I know I lost it. I, I understand the history. I understand what I did with Bathsheba. I understand what I did with her husband. I understand all my faults and what I've done. But God, I, I desire one thing. I restore. Psalms 51 is telling you, I want it back. I need it. I, I got to have it. I'm miserable without it. And I was as miserable as I could be. I couldn't even stand myself over a two-hour drive to come home. I couldn't stand myself. I stunk so bad. I'd have to open the windows and go, good night, you stink. And I wasn't walking around going, yeah, yeah, I got the joy, joy, joy. You know what I did? I got in that shower. Man, that water, that pool hot water, that real hot water that she can put on, started to get on me, and I'd start taking that soap started scrubbing myself down. I went in looking for something, and I came out with it. Why? Because I went to the right spot for the right reason to get what I needed to feel refreshed again. I almost preached on you, to you this morning on the altar. I understand the design of the altar. I looked some stuff up about the altar and looking in the dictionary and the thesaurus and all that. And uh, I, I've told you before, I preached um, at a church in Akakit one time years ago. And uh, I preached on the second coming and I preached on the altar and the guy didn't like the altar. It's Old Testament. I'm going to tell you something. A trip to the altar will give you a lot of help because you're taking that load you carry and you're dropping it on a place. Anything that ever hits an altar, 
never goes back the same way it came. It's your decision to make, not mine. I'm not trying to push you one way or the other. I'm just telling you what helped David. David got truthful. The restoration. We lose our joy and salvation of many times. It does not want us to be um, stray or loose. That joy, this joy can be and should be restored. When you read that psalm in Psalms chapter 51, it's told to you that you can get it back. I don't know what it is or who it is or how it is. You can do with it what you want. But that's something the Lord laid on me. It isn't about how many people come to church. Amen. Because all I can do is put my big mouth down and drop down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No. How many do I deserve to come? And why are you coming? I come because I get encouraged by God's people. I come because that's where I'm expecting to meet him at. And I'm come because that's where he wants me to be. But he used to tell little old Manny, I hadn't seen that child, and he's a grown man now in years. But he said, Manny, you have to prepare to get something from God. If you don't get ready, don't expect God to give you anything. You know what? If you don't have your joy that you had, the circumstances and situations, and as David had gotten to a point in his life where sin had got a grip on him, and the old expression, sin will not leave you the way it found you, it always costs you something. But there is a God who says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There is a God who wants you to have joy. He wants you to go around and let his light shine that others might see. I don't know what you're going through, what you're not going through. I, th this situation with the pandemic and all that has caused a lot of people to die. I don't know, somebody contrived it, somebody, but can I tell you, it did not take God by surprise. It didn't. None of this has taken God by surprise. I was reading some stuff the other day uh, from Doc that I got, and I had the privilege of, Miss Pam gave me quite a bit of stuff of his, and I appreciate it. I feel convicted that I need to read it and look at it. And, um, is there anything right now that would stop you from wanting him to come and take you home? Take us out of here. Get us out of here. How many you say, hey, I'm ready to go. Let's get out of here, man. Let's go, 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 go. I'm ready. But until then, Pay the power bill. Let your light shine. And the only way you can get that joy back is getting things right between him and you. And God will help you. Lord, thank you for this morning. For those that are here, pray you're blessed in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother. If you have a hymn, let's go to 381. 381 is your all on the altar.
can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body and soul. Would you walk with the Lord in the light of his word and have peace and content You must do his sweet will to be free from all ill on the altar your all you must lay is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid your heart does the spirit come can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield in your body and soul. Oh, we never can know what the Lord will be of the blessings for which we have Till our body and soul He doth fully control And our all on the altar is laid Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid Your heart sweet 